In this episode, we're heading to Tenderfield in New South Wales. It was a very cold and frosty start to the day as we headed north on the New England Highway. So here we are at Tenerfield uh, Railway Museum. Just met Bill, uh, who's a real character. So Bill, <laughs> just tell us in general, if, what's the museum about? What can we well, see here? We have a whole host of uh, volunteers that come in on a Wednesday and a Saturday. They tinker away. Um, we haven't actually got a production line, <laughs> but they come in and do stuff, which enables this to be open. Yep. Um, the small amount of money we charge to come in is just to keep the lights on and the doors open. Yep. But um, this has all been done over a period of 30 odd years, so we've had a lot of volunteers that are, have skills, mm. quite amazing. Yeah, yep. And so they restored all different trains, no, um, all the other... A lot of this stock, Scott, actually was bought from New South Wales, mm -hmm. different localities. They had someone that bought them for us, yep. or we bought them from them. They. Uh, put them on the back of a truck and brought them up here. Yep. So most of, there was no actual rolling stock here. Wow. When the, when the railway closed, they took everything with them. Yeah, yeah. Outside of the structure in the building. Yep. Yeah. And how many rolling stock have you got here now? There's lines of it. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't really roll, it doesn't move. Oh, it doesn't roll. It doesn't go, no, no, it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. It's non-rolling. <laughs> so it's non-rolling, but there's, there's a lot of Carriages, yeah, yeah. a little engine that I can see. This stuff here, those carriages are from the 70s. Yep. Uh, they possibly went up to about 2000 or something. Yeah. Diesel. Yeah, yeah. You walk into them and it's like a time capsule. Yeah, yeah. It's quite amazing how, it's just a, the whole point, joint, well, even me, I'm a time capsule. <laughs> 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 uh, so it's wonderful how volunteers have if it wasn't because the volunteers wouldn't be open. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. quite amazing. So we can walk through those different yeah, carriages. Every, everything's open. Trip down memory lane. Yep. Um, all roads lead to Rome, Scott, so you always come back here. <laughs> that's the exit. <laughs> that's the exit. This is beautiful. Really nice. We've got the people that come here and put all... It's like a little oasis, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is quite beautiful. Quite magnificent, yeah. Yeah. Um, we've got a couple of sheds at the back there. Yep. I don't know if you noticed when you came in that that's a trike. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Trike, that's a trike shed there, which a whole variant of trikes over the right, okay, de right. decades, how they changed, how they got motorised. Yeah, okay. Excellent, so, mate. Well, yeah. thank you. Appreciate it. Nice talking to you. Yeah, um, yeah. May I say, thank you for the work you and your beautiful wife does and your organisation. Awesome. Great. Thank okay. you. Nice to meet you. Tannerfield and this railway played a very significant part in Australian history. When Henry Park stopped off at Tenterfield on his railroad journey from Brisbane to Sydney in 1889, he gave the first rousing public speech, calling on Australians to unite under one constitution. He became one of our most important founding fathers and Tenterfield became the birthplace of modern Australia. Parks argued on the basis of trade between the independent colonies of Queensland and New South Wales, the importance of uniformed railway gauges, and of the need for a unified national military. And he said the first step 
was to hold a conference with a delegate from each of the six independent Australian colonies to draft a national constitution which they would deliver to England's Queen Victoria, declaring Australia's national sovereignty under its own constitution, independent of England's interference. Twelve years later, Australia did become a federated nation on the 1st of January 1901, without any need for a war of independence. And that was something of which our forefathers were very proud. Today we have come up to Tenderfield and it is freezing. I'm all rugged up for today. Uh, we're standing at the front of the Tenderfield um, Memorial and this Howard's are behind me. There's another one that's a war trophy that we'll have them show you as well. So we're having a look around at the main street. We've been to the Railway Museum and uh, have a bit of a look around with our new toy, the drone, uh, different perspective as well. Tenerfield is on the junction of the New England and Bruxner Highways in northern New South Wales. We always come to the Willow Tree Cafe. We had lunch here. Heather had a chicken special with grilled chicken, avocado and salad. And I had a really nice fish and chips. The chips were excellent. Tenerfield is also best known for saddler George Woolno and his world famous grandson, Peter Allen. Peter penned the well loved Australian classic song Tenterfield Saddler about his grandfather who worked here at this saddlery and his life growing up with his family in Tenerfield and Armadale. There are a lot of old historical buildings and shops along the main street. It's a nice, easy stroll along both sides of the main stretch.
On the way home, we flew the drone at Balancing Rock at Stonehenge, just south of Glen Innes, and I didn't even crash it. We don't know where we're going next, but we know we want to spend those minutes with mates. <laughs>